Oh snap, welcome back to the channel y'all, my name's Patrick. If you like true crime, do me a favor, leave a follow on the page, especially here on Rumble, uh, and probably YouTube too, I think this is going to go up on YouTube as well. Um, yeah, we're new to Rumble, y'all welcome in, good to see everybody, love this platform, love being able to say whatever I want, uh, especially when talking about the true crime, because these people do some crazy things, uh, so leave a uh, leave a like on the video make sure you follow the channel and y'all because we got a crazy one to talk about right now uh teachers gone wild uh seriously this is crazy as hell and i've noticed it and i keep seeing these videos posted like constantly uh and it's female to i mean there's male teachers too but there's like a crazy amount of female teachers like i don't know if it's always happened or if it's just like they're getting caught now. I don't know what's happening, but these people are crazy as hell. I talked about one over on TikTok that was like making friends with benefits bracelets for an 11 year old student that she had allegedly. Jesus Christ, these people are crazy. Uh, anyways, I did see that Law and Crime. Uh, did a video talking about this. I think Chris Hansen, <laughs> fittingly, uh, was in it. So I'm going to shrink myself down, y'all, and let's take a look at what the hell is going on in the uh, education uh, world right now. Oh, look at him, too. Jesus Christ. Look at him. They're just like, mm hmm. Women hired to nurture and teach children, later accused of taking advantage of their positions and sexually assaulting the kids. What's driving Jesus. them to molest kids that they should be protecting? Thanks for joining me for Crime Fix. I'm Anjanette Levy. Female teachers accused of using their jobs to target their students who are just kids for sex. It's happening a lot these days. And some of these cases involve students as young as 12. Or 12, maybe it was. Oh, even, even I mean, it doesn't matter. In Texas, Jaden Charles, a pregnant mother of four, was arrested in the past week, accused of having sex with multiple students. Police telling local TV stations they have video of Charles at a hotel with a student. Another Texas man that is crazy as hell. What is wrong with these people? Y'all coming in too. I see you got uh, some of y'all getting notified now. Yeah, we just went live. Welcome in, you guys. T make sure you hit the follow button or hit hit the follow button. Hit the like button, y'all. Yeah, we're talking about these crazy ass teachers going wild. Shout out Gemini, Morgan, Morgana, Simply Samantha, and Rachel H. in the house. That's what I'm saying. It's crazy as hell. Let's keep going. This case, Margaret Claire Burris was charged last month with having an improper relationship with a student after police said they found inappropriate text messages on her phone. In Florida, Lauren King, a paraprofessional, was also charged recently with having sex with a 12-year-old student. Man, you're going to burn in hell for that one, lady. You're going to burn in hell for that one. 12 years old, and she was teaching the, the, the um, what did she say? Para? What was it? Para? Para professional. Para professional, yeah. Was also charged recently with- Man, look at that face. Yeah, you, that's the face of, oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm going to burn in hell. Jesus ain't even going to forgive my ass. <laughs> Look at her, man. She's fucking, she worried. She is worried. Yep, early live stream. We got to go, uh, we got to go East Coast friendly from time to time. It goes pretty well. It's going good. You're on early. Yes, I am. Like this amazing, epic East Coast love. That's right. Having sex with a 12-year-old student. I can remember back in the 90s when Mary Kay Letourneau was arrested and charged with raping her 12-year-old student, Vili Falau. Letourneau served time in prison and even gave birth to two children fathered by Falau. They even later married. The case was... Look, sound like he didn't full out. <laughs> Shit, I didn't even have my... Uh... I didn't even have anything plugged in, y'all. I couldn't even do the the badooch. Son of a bitch. I messed up. Sorry, y'all. That's sick, though. I mean, I guess it happened in the 90s, so I guess it's a different time. But even still, that's sick. That's damn sick. All right, let's go. Shocking. People couldn't believe it. Now it seems like we're hearing about a female teacher being arrested every other week somewhere around the country for having sex with a student. 
with me to discuss what seems to be an epidemic of female teachers being arrested for sex crimes with students is Chris Hansen. He's an expert in this. He's the host of... <laughs> He's an expert in sex crimes, uh, in catching them. You might want to clarify that. Holy hell. Takedown with Chris Hansen. He's also the co-founder of the True Blue Crime Network. Uh, Chris... I just can't get over the number of female teachers who've been arrested recently. We've covered at least 10 or 12 of them just in the last couple of months across the country. So what is going on as far as you can tell? Are we just not screening these people properly or are we hiring people who are too young and too immature to handle these positions? Too young and immature? What? No, it's sick people that think they can get away with it. They think they can get away with it. I blame social media. It's social media. That's exactly what it is. It's social media. I would almost buy into the age argument and the maturity argument, Anjanette, except for the fact that we've seen cases of offenders involving crimes like this who are in their 70s on the most extreme side. This I saw that lady so much. In the last I saw that lady. She was she was crazy as hell out there trying to get. Um, like teens, like 13, 14 year olds uh, to come back to her house and stuff. Yep. Last 18 months that we at True Blue have actually commissioned a documentary looking at the root cause of this, trying to find out. And I don't pretend to have the answer to that question. We are delving into it. But I can tell you, based upon all the hundreds of predator investigations that, that we've done and continue to do at True Blue, you see trends. And what causes the trend? The offense typically has its roots in fantasy, many times in porn. And so if you're seeing teacher-student fetish porn on one of the social media hubs or platforms uh, providing this sort of material, you ultimately will see this play out in real life. And I think that may have some effect on what we're seeing now. There, oh, there, there, there's some fantasy brewing out there in, in a certain uh, section of our society that's being played out. And, and that's part of what I think we're seeing here now. That's, a, that's an interesting take from you because I think- I don't know, y'all. <laughs> what do you think about that? Chris Hans is trying to say that these teachers are just watching a certain kind of, uh, of uh, video on the hub and they're being like oh yeah i want to try that on for size you know what it is i think it's a power dynamic thing i think that they i think that these teachers are probably like they're like they want to feel like they're in control and then so they go after their like the kids that they're already in an authoritative position over and they're like they're like i want to go I'm going to take this even further. That's what I'm thinking. I could be totally wrong. I have no idea. I'm not these crazy ass people that allegedly did all this shit. I got cat here flying around me like crazy too. Cause Dallas decided to jump on me, but I don't know. Y'all tell me what you think. What would be the reason behind that? That there, that is a legitimate concern. The pornography aspect of this, it, it creates this fantasy, but also, I mean, this is illegal. I mean, this is not well, it is illegal. This is not... It is illegal. Oh, and shit. The other thing that psychiatrists will tell you. It's also illegal to speed. And I'm not trying to compare the two, but I'm just saying that, you know what I mean? Like these ladies are like, well, I'm going to go 10 miles over the speed limit. What's going to happen? Maybe in their head, they're thinking, well, I mean, listen to the, like somebody just, who's just said it? Uh, it's the music culture. Yeah. Morgana. Exactly. Like maybe they're thinking like, well, these teachers, they're listening to all this music talking about da, 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 da. They're never going to say anything. You know what I mean? I don't know. Let's keep, let's keep going. That for some of these. Oh, by the way, y'all real quick, hit the like button. We got like 60 something people watching and one like. <laughs> one like y'all. And I think it's probably mine. People, they're acting out an experience that either reflects a very. Uh, exciting point in their life, or they're trying to catch up with something they missed out on. Predators who talk to me after they're arrested, well, and I don't know whether they're telling me the truth or not, but they will often tell me that they're preying on a girl who's 12, 13, 14, 15, because 
they felt they missed out when they were 12, 13, 14, 15, and other kids were having sex and they weren't. I, I don't know if I buy that, but that's... No, that sounds like a cop-out. That's what they say. And the other thing psychiatrists and therapists will tell you is that in the case of a female teacher who's exploiting a, a young male student, it will represent a, a happy, pleasureful, uh, pleasant time in, in their lives. And mm, I wonder if the numbers went down since OnlyFans has become a thing with teachers. Just curious. Uh, the numbers went down of them, of, of people doing this stuff. I would think the numbers would go up. I think more teachers, if they have that stuff, then the kids find out and they're like, oh my God, did you see Miss Johnson? You know what I mean? Pun pun intended. Like, Miss Johnson's got OnlyFans, you know? And then that hypes it up. And then she's like, oh, now I got these teenage boys, you know, checking out my OF. They want to recreate that experience. Or they just think that it's acceptable. And they're like, oh, well, I have this. So... I can I can do other things too. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's crazy. So, at the cost of exploiting a child, and so I think it all plays together. You know, there's never a single point failure or single point cause in, in these situations. It's a combination of things that all come to a head. But absolutely, in in above being anecdotal, I can tell you that we're seeing more of these cases than ever before. And I've been in this business for 42 years as a reporter and 20 years um, investigating child predators. Uh, literally 20 years ago this month, we did the very first investigation. And, mm. you know, I've, I've come to learn a lot about these, these crimes. And, and, and so I think there's very definitely a link with, uh, with porn and fetish porn involving teacher-student scenarios. But is it the female teachers watching that? I don't even know. I mean, girls, ladies, let me know. Thumbs up, thumbs down. I don't even think y'all watched that kind of material. I guess y'all do. You probably watch more of it than guys do. That is. Y'all get crazy as hell sometimes. It's very interesting. And part of me, it almost sounds like there's an arrested development kind of thing going on here as well. well I think that's part of it too. Yeah. But you shouldn't be in I, these positions then. I mean, like, well, exactly. Come on. And like, so the, the question is, you know, are we doing enough to screen people? But if you, if right. you look at the case in the Midwest that we explored on, on uh, True Blue a couple months ago, you had a, a, literally a woman in her 70s at a private Christian school who was, you know, sexually involved with, with at least one and maybe more students. I, in her 70s, y'all. Who suspects somebody of that? You know, it, it, it doesn't meet the criminal math of what we normally see. So, you know, obviously we need screening. Obviously school administrators need to be vigilant about who they hire and how quickly they hire the background checks of those. Yeah, but it's also the administrators perpetrating these crimes as well. I just talked about the, the principal. He was an elementary school principal online using craigslist which i didn't even know was still a thing people who have craigslist still on craigslist trying to find like 14 15 16 year old girls to come skinny dipping at his house <laughs> elementary school principal jesus they hire but you know uh, a lot of these cases are, are slipping through it and we're seeing more than ever before they do seem to be slipping through. And I and I wonder, are we becoming more aware of it? And I, I think back to when I was in high school, of course. And when I was in high school, I mean, the teachers, we had a couple of younger teachers, right? But all the teachers just seemed like older. They seemed like older than your parents, or at least your parents' age, at least. And it didn't ever seem like somebody, like, I mean, maybe I was just fortunate that we didn't have that going on in the places where I went to school. Um, but it just didn't seem like we heard you probably did. You probably did. And nothing ever happened. What about it as much? I mean, is it because they're getting caught more these days as well? Because Yeah, because of our damn, well, luckily because of electronics. They think, I mean, back in the day it was word of mouth, right? Oh, the basketball coach is whatever, right? And the people are like, what? No way. There's never any proof of it. Nowadays, it's like, oh shit, we got Snapchats, we got text messages, we got like, location pings uh from y'all's location pings oops get out of my attic 
Oh, that was the wrong one. It's about the connections. It's all about the connections, y'all. They're gonna catch every one of these sickos. Or at least they have the they have a better chance of nowadays. As well, we I, have, I think there's you know, I think that's part of it. Phones, I mean, social again, media? I think it's yeah. I think it's cell phones, I think it's social media if, that fuels this from all standpoints, the internet obviously. But I also think there there's more awareness. So there's more opportunity for somebody to report it. There's more, I hope that all these stories we do on, on predators um, embolden survivors and, and uh, victims to, to come forward and report this. So I think there's more of that. I think, you know, parents do review their children's social media. And a lot of these cases are uncovered because a parent. They better. They better. Although there was that one, and I'm sure they're going to talk about her too. The one that was in um, Alabama, I think it was. And the dad ended up getting arrested also because he was okay with it. And he had his, I think, 16 or 17-year-old son. The teacher was coming to their house. And the dad was there. And they were going back in the son's room. And the dad was, like, out in the living room, you know, being like, <laughs> yeah, son, <laughs> get her, you know. And he got arrested, too. See something on a cell phone or a tablet. And you can also see odd behavior. You know, if the teacher is picking up your student, you know, from the house and, you know, they're not going on a field trip, or at least not the kind of field trip you want them to go on, um, it raises suspicions. But all predators, predator teachers included, you know, prey on those who are vulnerable. So they will try to find kids who fit the scenario of somebody who may not tell or who may be vulnerable for a number of different reasons. And, and that's what predators do. So that's why some of these cases go on for months, uh, sometimes many months before they're reported and uncovered and investigated. But, you know, at least now, because of all the awareness and all the investigations that, you know, we've done and so many different law enforcement agencies across the country have done, you know, the, the justice system takes this seriously. It's not just swept under the rug. You know, these cases are prosecuted. District attorneys across the country take it very seriously. Law enforcement takes it very seriously. And, and you know, some of these people are going to prison and, and they're facing, you know, very, very strict uh, enforcement here. Good. What do schools need? Protect kids at all costs, y'all. Protect kids at all costs. Let me get some thumbs up in the chat for that one. Y'all hit me with some rumble reds too. Oh my God. East Coast friendly, y'all. Make sure. Oh, leave a like. How many likes do we get now, y'all? We got 12. Oh, man, we're crushing it. We're taking Rumble by storm, y'all. <laughs> 12 likes. We can get 100, y'all. Come on. We got almost 100 people watching. Let's go. To do and we're new here, y'all. If you're just tuning in, it's your first time here. My name's Patrick. Hit that follow button. True crime live streams on TikTok, YouTube, Rumble now. Kind of almost mainly Rumble. Really, TikTok and Rumble, so. Y'all shout out to screen better for this. I mean, do you have any idea? I mean, do we need a more stringent interview process? Do we need like a psychological evaluation? No. Of the uh, well, I mean, I think yes, but I don't think it's going to catch them because they're not. What? What is it going to be? Literally a question on the test. that says, would you ever or have you ever considered sleeping with one of your students, underage students? And they click yes. <laughs> they're like, well, I guess. Oops. This wasn't anonymous. Son of a bitch. These teachers before they're hired and these paraprofessionals? Well, I think each state has, has a responsibility and the federal government has a responsibility to set a, a baseline of, of a background check. So obviously there's a criminal background check. Um, there should be some sort of interview that is conducted by a school administrator who is practiced in, in psychology and perhaps psychiatry to say, okay, you know, does this person seem fit? That's not 100%, though. They might catch something, but they might not. Um, you know, there's no 100% guarantee on any of this. You know that. You've been in this business too long to know that you can't, right. you know, have a 100% dome of safety. Just put a zero tolerance on teachers and students communicating outside of like, I don't know, like if y'all schools use like um, class dojo or like um, there's like another service, but it's like it's like through the school that you can message the teachers and, the te and you can ask the teacher for help or something like that. Like zero tolerance outside of 
like an approved medium of communication. If you catch him emailing or texting or WhatsApp or Snapchat, <laughs> done. Zero tolerance. Yeah, JoJo, stuff like that. Dojo, that yeah, that stuff. But anything outside of that, zero tolerance. This like you you text back, you text a kid, you know, back. Adios. Yeah, people slip through. And that's unfortunate, but that's part of, you know, reality. But we can do the best we can to prevent that from happening. And it doesn't appear in some of these cases that's been done. You know, I, I sadly, you can't always assume that everybody's a good person. You know, um, I think sometimes you have to assume that everybody has, you know, an element of, of badness to them or evil to them. And, and that's unfortunate. But when it comes to teachers and the safety of our students and our children, I think we need to take that extra step. And talk to your kids every day. I mean, I well, I think. And look, this is this is, I, this is that too, man. That too, man. <laughs> talk to your kids every day. Make sure you check in everything, everything. That's the problem. There's zero tolerance. Teachers are going to school drunk, high. You name it. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, that's true. It is true. This is this is right. This is. It's like there's no perfect solution, right? There's no perfect. It's like we can't just wave a magic wand and it's, oh, we live in a utopia, you know, my mantra. But man, the crazy shit they got going on nowadays. Oh, my God. It ain't helping it. I guarantee you. It ain't because helping. all this is going on, because the police can't be everywhere, the feds can't be everywhere, school administrators can't be everywhere. Your best defense on all of this is the relationship that you have with your children, and especially Amen to that. in the early stages of... Amen on that. Children having access to the internet. The first conversation is, there are adults on the internet who like to trick children. They will pretend right. to be children in yep. order to trick you. If you don't... Oh yeah, I had that conversation. There's people that will pretend to be your friends, other people, me, everybody. Don't believe anybody. Don't believe any of that stuff. Don't know them in real life. You don't know them as friends on the internet. That's how it starts. And as kids mature and they have greater access to the internet, you need to ratchet up that conversation. But you also need to, you know, talk about adults in their lives. And, you know, we want to look up to our teachers and, and our principals and our coaches. But, you know, if something happens, you know, come to me. It's the same with sextortion. You know, so many of these kids are afraid to tell their parents they made a mistake and sent a you know, a sexually explicit picture thinking it was a girl and it was actually an extortionist from half a world away. And they're committing suicide over this as opposed to saying, you know, I messed up. I've seen those cases. That is so freaking sad. And no parent would would uh, not understand that. And so they're, they're, especially when it comes to boys, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, the, you know, their their brains aren't fully formed yet. You know, they don't get right. all that's happening to them. And They're so, impulsive. you know, we, oh, we yeah. want to protect all, our, our girls, you know, but we have to protect our young men, too. And they have to know that they can come to you if there's a problem. And, and that is still, you know, the best defense of your family, of your children is to have that conversation. And it's not easy to have always, but you need to have it. Yeah. Every, every night I ask my son, how was school? What happened at school? You know, yeah. just, I don't force him, but I, yeah. I do. And we have these conversations ever so often about how not everybody is a good person. Um, so right. I, I just think back to these things. It off, like, you can slough it off on me and, and, and my investigations, you know, I mean, you know, <laughs> so you got to watch this. It's, I haven't introduced I, my son I, yet I to Chris story. Hansen. Yeah. Well, it's, and maybe it's maybe not age appropriate yet, but I mean, there's all, there's always uh, a reason to, to raise alarm without you being overprotective or seeming overprotective. You know, you can always you can always blame it on somebody else that I saw this and I just want to make sure I know it sounds silly and extreme, but I want to make sure this, you know, isn't happening at your school. And you just know that you can tell me if something weird or like this happens. You know, again, blame it on Hansen. That's fine. I'm comfortable with that. Uh, we will blame it on Hansen. Chris Hansen, <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Anjanette. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Mm -mm. Mm, I'm telling y'all, man, this world is crazy as hell right now. Teachers gone wild. Oh, my Lord. Oh, what are we going to do? 
What are we going to do? I'm telling y'all, zero freaking, zero um, tolerance. Just anything, anything questionable, adios. See you later. Damn. What do y'all think? Should we do another one? I think I had another video um, ready to go, but I'll have to end this one and make it real quick. You guys want another one? Thumbs up in the chat. Thumbs up in the chat. Should we start another little video? It's about um, who Mystery Project has arrived. Oh, Samantha, you got it. Simply Samantha, you got it. Hell yeah. Y'all, make sure you go check that out too. Uh, go to thehauntedside.com uh, and check out all the merch. The Haunted Side. Dot com. There it is. Boom. Yeah. Go go check uh, hauntedside.com. Go check out the merch. Um, get that mystery project merch, y'all. If you want to help support the show, make sure you leave a like and give me about five minutes, y'all. I'll be right back up. And we're gonna talk about um Riley Strain. Let's do it, y'all. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining the East Coast friendly live stream, y'all. The little tidbits, you know, the little ones that I pop through and do. All right, y'all. Love you guys. I'm going to see y'all in just a few minutes. Stick around. Make sure you leave a comment, too, and leave a like on this video. See you guys in a few.